Good day, students. Welcome to math.sorg.com. In this paper, we're going to be going over how to find the relative and absolute extrema with a graphing calculator. All right, so for our question number one, um, we're going to estimate any relative extrema. And if you see the word extrema, you're basically looking at maximum or minima, okay? Um, so we have to estimate any relative extrema using our graphing calculator. So let's say we have the function for problem one. Let's say we have the function f of x equals x squared minus 5x. Okay, so how can we estimate the extrema using our graphing calculator? So what we'll do, we're going to be using the TR-83 um, for this presentation. You press, let's say you start from your home screen. You press the white button, so that takes you to the graphing um, entry window. For y1, we're going to enter the function x carrot 2, x raised to the second power, minus 5x. Okay, so that's the function we're going to graph, and then we'll hit the graph button. And there goes uh, the graph. All right, so what we're looking for is the um, relative extrema, if any, um, for this function. Okay, so what I did is I took a snapshot of the calculator, uh, calculator's graph. So what we have here is a quadratic function increases to, as it head towards infinity in the right direction and negative infinity in the left direction. So what are extrema? We talked about that earlier. We're looking for the local or relative mass or min. All right, so let's start with the relative, relative, uh, another word for relative is local, okay? Relative or local minimum. All right, or think about it as minima if we have more than one or minimum if we just have one, let's just call it min. Okay, so here we're going to state um, where it's located and also what the value, if any, exists. So think about minimums as the values of your function, okay? Low points of your function, those are your minimums. That's if it's an interior point. If you're ascending or descending to an endpoint, like you have an endpoint like this, you're ascending from it, or you're descending to an endpoint, those are local minimas too, because in your neighborhood, they are the lowest, lowest point. Okay? So look at this. Well, the endpoint scenario does not apply here because it increases forever. All right? Um, but do we have any values in the interior of the graph? And the answer is yes, we have just one value right here, and that is a local minimum, all right? So the task is to use our graphing calculator to find the coordinates of that um, point, also known as the vertex of your parabola, and um, that will tell us the location of the local minimum and what the value is, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to be using the calculate feature here. So press second function trace to access the calculate feature, second function trace. And then what we're looking for is a minimum, scroll down to three, press enter. So it asks for the left bound. So any points to the left of this low point right here is your left bound. So press enter. When you press enter, you have the arrow pointing to the right of the um, point to the left of the minimum, okay? And then you, it asks you for the right bound. So you scroll to any points to the right of the minimum you're looking for. Remember, you do not always have to have one minimum, okay? There are other functions that have multiple minima, so that's why we're going through all this trouble. All right, press enter. So the arrow is up. It's pointing to the interval with which we want to determine the approximate value of the minimum. So you can clearly see that it's pointing into this interval right here, which means that the minimum that you, de you desire to determine the coordinates of should be located somewhere here, okay? And then for guess, um, you can scroll to the minimum, somewhere near the minimum, just to help the calculator know exactly where you want to find the minimum coordinates of, and then press enter. 
and then it has it tells you the extreme as a minimum and as the x coordinate and is at negative 6.25 okay so let's go ahead and write that down okay so just move stuff around so this is the answer the calculator just gave us so relative to local minimum um we have a local or uh, relative min at x um, equals is an approximate value 2.5 okay and the value of uh, y equals negative 6.25 okay so that's the location of the local min and that's the value all right now how about our relative or local maximum or maxima if you have more than one. So we're looking for, um, what we're looking for are peaks, okay? Do we have peaks in this function or do we have endpoints that we are ascending to or descending from? All right, so we have any peaks in the interior or endpoints that we are ascending to or descending from, then those are our um, relative or local maxima. All right. In the interior of this function, we only have a valley, namely this one right here. Okay, we don't have any peaks. At the endpoints, we see that they're ascending. Uh, you're going to infinity, and you're descending from infinity in this direction. So you're heading to infinity, descending from infinity. We are not constrained to a boundary or an interval, so the endpoints do not um, are not going to be. Um, maximums because they ascend forever. This one goes to infinity, this goes to infinity, it doesn't stop. So what does that tell us? Since um, we're not descending from or ascending to a boundary point and we have no peaks in the interior, we have no um, local or relative max. So we just simply say none. All right, let's take a look at uh, question number two. So let's say we have the function f of x equals x to the third minus 3x squared. All right, and we are to find the relative extrema um, for this function. Okay, so um, turn on our calculators, enter the function, we have x to the third minus 3x squared. Enter. Okay, so one add-on. Let's say that we're constrained to the interval from negative one to four. Okay, so let's see from negative one all the way to four. All right, let's put some boundary values here um, so you can see how endpoints can qualify as extreme as two. All right, so hit graph. <clears throat> Zoom six. So if you have your standard zoom window, what I did is I hit zoom six. When you hit, whenever you hit zoom six, it um, recalibrates the axis to the default setting, plus or minus 10 on the x's and y's. So this is what the graph looks like. All right. So we want to focus our attention on the interval between negative one and four. These are the constraints on the x's. So to accomplish that, we're going to go to our window, press the window button, and then we're going to alter the x values for the window. All right. So the minimum for the x will be negative 1. Lower bound of our interval here and the upper bound is 4. Okay, and then hit graph again. And it gives you exactly what you want. Okay, but um, it doesn't really, it kind of cuts out 4 here. Um, but negative one comes out nicely. So let's do a real quick trace. If you press second function trace, now let's just trace, go back to the graph. So press trace. And then I want to see what are the coordinates of um, one, negative one. So you enter negative one in your calculator and it tells you that negative four is the output. And then what's the coordinate of four? Enter. 16, which is kind of higher than what we have here. The y um, 
calibration goes from negative 10 to 10. So had it been we adjusted the window to 16, then we'll be able to see uh, what's going on there, okay? Okay, so um, what points are we going to be considering on this graph? Where are we going to focus our attention on? All right, so we're going to be taking a look at, since it's a boundary um, scenario here, we're going to be taking a look at the endpoint. So this is the starting point. The other endpoint ends up somewhere here. So let's put it right here. The one that traces to, well, let me make it a little bit smaller. The one that traces to positive four. Positive four. We trace it up somewhere there. So extend the graph. So we need to know that coordinate and that coordinate because the endpoints in this situation qualify as extremists. And then we need to know this point right here, coordinate of that point and the coordinate of this point right here. Okay, now why do we care about those? Well, the local extremists, remember, are the points that are the endpoints that you ascend from or descend to or interior points that are valleys, okay? Check this out. This point, you're ascending from this point, from this end boundary point. All right, let me change the color so you can see. Let's put that in uh, blue. So you're ascending from this end point, so that automatically makes this a local min. And this is a valley, which automatically makes it a local min also, all right? Um, now, for the local maximas, what you're looking at are endpoints that you ascend to. So you're ascending to this endpoint. So that automatically makes this a local max. And in the interior, you're looking for peaks. This right here is a peak, which makes it a local maximum. All right. So we already know the coordinates of this point. This point, we entered it, we got negative. I'm sorry, we got 4, 16. And then for this one, we had, uh, for this local main right here, we had, uh, what was it? Negative 1 and negative 4, I think. So let's just put it right here. So that was negative 1, negative 4. We'll verify in a second. So now we're going to use the calculator's extrema feature to determine the coordinates of this local max and this local mean right here. All right, so let's pull back our, bring up back our calculators. Um, so the one I forgot was negative one. So let's trace negative one and it's negative four. Okay, good. So this is correct. Now let's find out what this local max here is. So we press second function trace. We calculate in the maximum enter. So you pick the points to the left of this extrema right here, enter, arrow pointing to the right, and then you scroll to the right of the extrema, press enter, it says guess. Well, what do you think it is? That looks like the origin, right? So it should be zero, zero, press enter. Well, it is zero, zero. These are really very, very small numbers, okay? So that's the origin right there. So the local maximum is, Zero, zero. And now we have to find this local mean right here. Um, let's see. So second function calculate the minimum. So any point to the left of the value or minimum that you have there, press enter. And any point to the right will be a good right bounce. So go past the minimum, press enter. Enter again, bam. So we have a local mean of two comma negative four. So let's put that down here. So this local mean is two comma negative four. All right, so let's go ahead and organize them. So our relative or local uh, minimum, let's do that first or as follows. We have a local minimum at um at, let's see local minimum at local min at x equals negative one and 
x equals 2. The reason why I group them together because they have the same value of y equals what? Negative 4. Okay, so we have two local minima with the same value of negative 4. Okay, how about our relative max or local max? What do we have there? So we have a local max, local max at x equals 0 with a value of y equals 0. And then we have another local max at um, x equals 4, and the value is uh, y equals 16. Okay, so those are our relative extremas. Now, what if you were asked to find the absolute maximum or minimum? Okay, let's just add that on there. So for the absolute, also known as the global extrema, so for the absolute or global minimum, let's do that first. We're looking for the lowest point, all right? These two are low points. The y values will help us determine which is lower. What do we know is about the y values of these two local minima? They have uh, the same y value. So they are both the absolute minimum of this uh, function, all right? So look, absolute mean, we have absolute mean at two points at x equals negative one and x equals two, and the, the absolute value is y equals negative four, all right? Now, what if we wanted to find the absolute or global maximum? What will that be? Well, let's take a look at the maximums that we have. The one of the, um, if it's a boundary point, if it's on a close interval, you're guaranteed to always have a maximum or minimum, okay? So this is a close interval, so we must have a maximum. So if you take a look at this, uh, we have two maximas here, two maxi, ma. Um, which of them has a bigger output value? We can clearly see that this one for 16 is even higher visibly. You can see that it's higher. It has a bigger y value. So that makes this the absolute maximum of the entire function in this closed interval. Okay, so there goes your, your g max or um, a max. Okay, so let's call it global maximum. The global maximum and is also your local maximum too. So we have an absolute maximum, absolute maximum at x equals 4, I think it is 4, and it has a value of y equals um, 16. So that's the uh, y value or the value of the absolute maximum um, of this function on the interval. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions on what we just covered, feel free to post your questions in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other pre calc tutorials such as this. More clues can be found on math.serve.com. Thanks again for watching, and have a wonderful day.